Right, so what we want to do now that we actually have the API key and as well as the account ID, the account ID actually is not that secret. Um, you can actually see it, you will see it a bit later when uh, during the other, the remaining videos. Uh, more importantly is the actual API key. That's really your access token where whoever actually obtained that uh, access key or API key, they will be able to um, fiddle around with your account. It's kind of like a pin number. So what we want to do next is to actually instantiate the Oenda Pi so that um, our Python can actually talk directly to the uh, Oenda platform to either trade or for now in our situation, what we want to do is actually um, what we want to do is actually uh, extract market information. So this is practice. The environment is practice environment and the access token that we need to pass through uh, to Oenda is the API key. So now what did I do? Access token. Okay, so now that we've instantiated, uh, we can move on to start actually obtaining the data and also information that we required for, for our algo. What I want to do is just uh, extract data uh, and store it into this variable called uh, response because if I don't store it, uh, it will end up printed on sc on the screen itself or the console it's called and then disappear altogether. So that's not really what we want. We want to actually store them so that we can actually make use of it in the future. The th three so-called instruments that I want to in, uh, pull data is Australian dollars, Kiwi and also the Euro. If this is successful, you will see that that line uh, of code has been run and now it's 11, the asterisk has disappeared. I really want to see what actually has been returned from um, Oenda. So I print the variable response and sure enough, uh, Australian, Kiwi and also the Euro has come through. But it's not really in a format that we can actually, um, that's easy to the eyes. Uh, what you can see is that there's a squiggle here, uh, there's a square bracket and then another squiggle. The squiggle here actually basically says this is a dictionary object. Now the key is prices with a semicolon and then the start of the actual bracket itself. The semicolon basically says this is a dictionary object. The bracket basically says this is a list. Uh, we actually have three items in this list. So let me just show you how to access the data within a Python dictionary object. So we have the response. Instead of printing it this time, we just type the variable name itself with the key, which is prices, and run it. And notice that what we get now is actually the list object with the squiggly. Within the list object, this is list object number one, list object number two, separate by all by comma, and finally list object number three. Python counting starts from zero. So for us to access the information in this one, we need to call that zero. So I'll just, let me just show you that and put a zero. That's how you reference a Python list object. Basically, this is telling the list object, look, uh, the Python that I want to obtain the data from list object number one in Python is starts with zero. So one is zero. So here you have it. The first item that comes back or rather the item that comes back is actually item number one, AUDUSD. But if we actually want to access EURUSD, so you will do number two, and sure enough, you get Euro dollar. Now, what if I actually want the actual ask price itself? So what you do now is you do exactly what you did, we did before. Uh, if you want to access a dictionary object, you just pass the key. In this case, we passed the ask key, and we get the ask price which is over here as well so this is um how you actually play around with it with the environment uh, or the 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 python environment so that you actually get familiar with it and appreciate how to extract some of these data what we want to do next is to actually store all of these data into a variable as i mentioned before if you don't store it it will disappear into the thin air you won't be able to actually pull up the data again so let me just um show you a couple of things neat things first thing is that we do want the time data the timestamp data we want to store the instrument information into the variable called instrument 
and the next one is the bid price uh, into the bid a variable and then the ask price variable in okay and this is how you actually store in and extract the information so when you run that they all been stored and you can't see so what we want to do now is to print it onto the screen in a format that we that is easily readable so we open up the bracket squiggly bracket okay uh, with the squ squiggly bracket open and close and then bit is equal to squiggly bracket as is equal to is equal to squiggly bracket and all of this in the format timestamp first I'll explain this in a minute instrument and followed by bit and ask price so if I run this and here you have it so what have I done what I'm asking Python to do is to print it in this format that I've set out here start with square bracket which is that one there and this quickly is actually uh, telling Python look put the first of the four variable here so the first variable that we have is actually timestamp so this is where the output of timestamp comes through followed by the second squiggly a space a space followed by the second variable or the squiggly which refers to the instrument followed by bid equals to and this squiggly bracket refers to the bid price which is that one there a space and then ask is equal to finally squiggly bracket ask price which is this ask price here so you can actually have it um you know lay out in any format that you want in in between you can actually put a uh question mark hash asterisk like that and it will come off that way as well not that i know why you want to do that but why would you want to do uh, these kind of formatting the answer is very simple logging uh, later on because you are running an automated trading system you want it to output onto the console every now and then say if this trade has been done you want it in a certain format rather than a whole bunch of junk and words that's too long you just want a one-liner to tell you or inform you that hey this trade has been done or well, what is the current market price now what did we import the pandas earlier uh, let me just show you the pandas is so that we can actually lay out in a format um, that is uh, much more pleasing to the eyes as you can see here is laid out in a table format you have the ask column bid column the instrument column uh, what is the status and finally the time that we receive these uh, data from uh, oenda uh, obviously that's not the only thing that pandas can do you can do a lot more with it uh, especially data analytics so I'll pause for now. In the next video, what we're going to do is go into how to obtain the tradable instruments um, that is available in Oenda. And it's lots of them, I promise you.